The day has finally come. We really, it started to feel like it was never gonna happen. But we're moving in to the new shop. Once we get a few tools over here, I'm gonna build the elevator. It's a day of mixed feelings. The last few days of working on the new shop, I've been like contemplating moving all this stuff over and it just, it just feels weird. Like I get a little bit emotional about leave, moving out of this shop, but it's also really exciting moving into the new shop. And I mean, it's not like the shop's getting burnt down or anything. It's gonna be here. We just won't be working in it. This is also where Will is gonna go when he goes on detention, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is where some swimming where... projects can be crafted. Yeah. Yeah. Or more accurately, little... this is where Will's gonna live because he no longer has a functioning car. He's <laughs> just gonna have to park his Subaru in here and sleep in it. <laughs> Oh, it rolls so nice on this floor. All right, well, we've moved one thing into the garage and you're already doing push-ups. Let's see them. Oh, look how much dust has stored up here, dude. It's never ever oh. been cleaned. Wow. This is the part, like, I think about this kind of stuff sometimes. I'm like, wow, build this nice shiny new shop. Uh -huh. Everything's gonna be covered with that in a couple of years. <laughs> the nature of what we do is this. That's insane. <laughs> Oh, hey, look, a whole nother set of tools. This is an old tool set I bought when I, when my alternator went out in Glacier National Park. I have hitchhiked. so many of those random tool boxes. I hitchhiked to the nearest town and bought this along with a new alternator at the local auto parts store. And then, so I used to just carry it around in my Subaru, but we'll just combine it into all the other ones. Hey, look, another ratchet. We've been oh, short on ratchets nice. for a while. Actually, doesn't look sketchy at all. Yeah, no, it's fine. I found our first treasure. Oh, we nice. always lose these hey, adapters. Another adapter. I've been looking for this one. Wow, you should nice. put those in the toolbox, my guy. We're finding so much good stuff already. This is like the Grand Tart treasure hunt. Guys, if we just remove the uh, wood out of the back of the ambulance, we can use it to unload all the stuff the all at once. so we don't gas ourselves out. Thing, that thing pumps out an alarming amount of uh, yeah, it's quicker than you would exhaust. think. Exhaust, yeah. Oh, it's the chain, because the skateboard wheel's already oh. eaten up, so the chain just goes <laughs> Nice sound. I have a box spring, then a this, and then that, and 
That's kind of like having a bed. Mm -hmm. And skid steers are so cool. They it's are. like a personal tank. Some nice light for elevator building. Yup. Time to uh, elevate situation of an elevator. I have this track here. This is called Unistrut, and this is the deep, heavy, heavy duty version. It's 12 gauge, so it's fairly thick, um, which is good because that's what's going to hold up our whole elevator. One of them will go pretty much here. With those in there, there's no space for bolts to go through those bolt holes. So, first step is going to be to cut out some tabs that'll weld onto this uh, unistrut and have a bolt on each side. So I'll just cut out a bunch of those. This one, because of the way this beam here tapers, I can't put it flat against the wall because it'd be in the middle of the window, right? I'm gonna put it over here on this surface of the beam here. We've got our winch here. I will mount that up yonder to the beam. I've got an outlet right there with a whole separate breaker just for that. I wonder how much faster we're gonna get stuff done. Well, I thought of that, but I also realized now I have to walk 60 feet to get to stuff, so it might balance out. <laughs> but it'll be much more pleasant to get stuff done, that's for sure. It already is, look at this. I have a little, little windowsill. I can do my CAD here and also look at the beautiful fall colors out there. It was so hard to go slow to work today because the cold air was going into my intake and making me go faster. What oh, is, is it? How it works? Turbo season. The cold air, the fall leaves, it's like the perfect mixture, air to fuel mixture that you can get. You just blast around. But we have an extra challenge coming. While Ethan's building the elevator, these guys are gonna see if they can build the bikes Go get lunch and come back before Ethan finishes the elevator. Oh. While you race amongst yourselves to see who can finish their bike and hit the road first. Oh, I'm gonna get first. Oh, I'm you. Oh, I'm gonna I'm get you, man. You. <laughs> All right. One of these boxes is much larger. This says X20. That one says X24. What does that mean? It's probably better. And whoever gets the razor blade first gets the big box. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I have never seen you move that quick in my life. Oh, got a slid off. Oh, this bike looks awesome. Dude, dual rear shocks? I think Steven won already. Why is this blade so... Yeah, I was texting Andrew, the guy who, you know, invented this the other day, and he's like, man, you use that thing so much, it's hard to remember a grind hard without their arc droid. And I'm like, I know, me too. <laughs> Got some little plates here. Very simple, but nice and nice and pretty. What about there? One, or this part then. I have just the slightest advantage, because 
I used the tip the box over method, and Steven used the pull one part yeah, out at a time actually, method. Actually, remember it said I was surprised? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll show you once I win this challenge, but <laughs> you wouldn't believe. Okay. Nothing like a brand new blade on the chop chop. Right here, I made these tabs for half inch bolts, but obviously I cannot access the back side of that to put nuts on it. So right now, these are not beefy enough, but they'll do for temporary. I'll pick up some more. These are lags. So I'm drilling a slightly smaller hole in the metal and in the wood, and these will just, you know, self thread into that hole. So um, for now, it'll keep it all aligned. And I'm gonna put my battery in a very visible area so Steven can't sabotage me. The real question is, Wills is probably gonna have all these loose bolts and he's gonna like fall apart halfway through. and sturdy. We'll get the bottom sturdy later. Uh, and the top, in theory, the top of the elevator will only come to like right here, which is plenty strong there. But if for some reason we wanted to go higher, I can just make a brace for this. Time to send our little trolleys on a ride here. Whee! Nice. Yeah, that was working. Nice. I'm not nice. It's not going to be a particularly quiet elevator, that's for sure. <laughs> It'll have a lot of character. I realized that uh, for part of this, I can just weld this track directly to the um, beam here. And there's really no reason not to because uh, the great thing about metal is that if you weld it, you can always cut the welds and then and then it won't be there anymore. We'll start with Stevens, the X20 Ingwe. It has 1,000 watts peak power, 93 miles of range. What? 20 inch tires. The whole bike is aluminum alloy, so it's super light. Guess the top speed of your bike, Stevo. Uh, 38 kilometers an hour. 31 miles an hour. Oh, that's pretty good. And it has eight gears, and they're Shimano gears too. That's like Oh, Shimano's really nice. a great brand, yeah. They don't like to missing something. You have the X24, man, because you got to the razor blade <laughs> first. What does this mean for me? 1,200 watts of peak power. No, That's no. 200 more than Steven. No. <laughs> the same exact range at 93 miles. You have dual clamp forks. I think the X24 has way more travel in the front suspension. That's gonna help you around the rally yep, track. on the jump. That's what I'm thinking. Bigger tires. When I was a kid, I'd like go on bicycle rides with grown-ups and they'd always have like bigger bikes than me. And now I'm the grown up and I have the bigger bike. I'm upping the ante guys. Whoever gets to the store first gets dibs on the garlic fries. Premium. I am getting there first, Steven. I don't care what I have to do. <laughs> carried away. This weld was just going really nice. And so I welded a, uh, like an inch of it and it just pulled it around and twisted it. My 
second track attached here, I realized I got a little ahead of myself and I didn't weld it, the two pieces together before I uh, started welding the other one to the beam. So I had to weld it in place up here, which was a little tricky, but I just put a support right at the seam to add some strength and then got one here. Man, this little station I have here, this is not at all the permanent home of the arc droid because it's right in front of the door. But it's really nice having this little shelf here for the computer stuff and then the plasma over here. Yeah. That's very nice. Yeah, this giant garage now and you just cornered yourself into one little nook. Uh, yeah. Well, you know. <laughs> I don't feel comfortable in all that space. It's too much. <laughs> Steven is way too nice and honest to play dirty, but Will's obviously more than willing, so I'm gonna help out Steven a little bit. When you're ready for your pedals, come find me and I'll give you a riddle. I've been in a couple of races in my time and uh, some would say I live my life half a mile at a time. You guys would know this if you listen to the Scent and Bet podcast, you'd know all my racing stories. So I feel like I'm pretty prepared for this challenge. Got the bike on the charger. I'm feeling pretty good about this. Did you just say a half a mile? <laughs> it's supposed to be a quarter mile! It's a drag race! A half a mile means literally nothing! <laughs> half a mile at a time, yeah, because you're caught your head down because it's like half a mile. Where's my paddles? Alright, we'll go oh, to the I'm old shop. <laughs> the Enway X20 is easily collapsible. Some might say it is compatible with an elephant's nose. A trunk. It's in the trunk of something. It's in the trunk of your Tesla box. Gotcha. Nice. How was that riddle skill? One of the holes doesn't line up with the rest. Oh, like not, it, like I made them a perfect rectangle and it's not like this one's just wrong. Like these were all cut out with probably either laser or hydrojet. Um, that one's off by like a 16th of an inch. Well, no, more than that, almost an eighth of an inch. So your on holes all of them. off, their holes yeah. are off. No, I, and, and I looked and like, if you look at the, if you look at the distance from the outside of the metal to the bolt, this one's visibly different. Oh. I don't know why. There's no reason I can imagine for that to be different, but. It is. Yeah, sure is. Shucks. I'm just hoping this elevator isn't too wobbly. But when it's all tied together with the two of them, it should be fine. Plus, can you imagine a bunch of weight on there? Yeah. Like, it, it's gonna have a lot of force pulling it straight out. I've learned that most of my failure to weld nicely is just being in a hurry. <laughs> that and weird, complicated positions. Like, in this case, you can just put it on the table and get a good position. Um, some things I've welded, you know, you just gotta be upside down and backwards to get in there, but, uh, yeah. Mostly, just preparation. Make everything clean and uh, get a good workstation. That's, that's the, main, um, the main factor. This right here might, might be one of my best welds I've ever done right there. Hey -o. I mean, this whole thing. I just decided to uh, uh, use this whole project as an opportunity to really practice. Because a lot of days I just do TIG and I just do it to get it done. Mm -hmm. I'm not really trying to improve, but this one I'm trying to improve. And in the interest of that, I welded the inside of that thing because it looks really cool. <laughs> it does not need to happen for strength, 
but it needed to happen for aesthetics. Now I have to design the brackets for the other side. So these ones just come straight out. Um, but because this rail is in a different spot, uh, these brackets are gonna go, uh, they'll bolt on to this section, and then there'll be a piece that welds on this way. So it'll be kind of a T-shaped bracket. Ethan has made huge progress on the elevator. I ordered lunch, I handed Will and Steven each a company card, and I think Will's about to finish. Oh, wow, this is fast. Oh, yeah. I'm getting him, though, on this corner. I think his is faster than mine, for sure. Very good, this is fast. Inway X26 and X24 are the most powerful e-bikes suitable for long-term riding under $2,000. And they're releasing their annual limited edition of only 100 pieces. The X26 and X24 have a 1200 watt super battery, giving you a full week of use on a single charge. You can get $50 off on all X26, 24, and 20 dual battery versions with our code GRINDHARDPLUMBINGCO50. So check the link below. Oh, he's catching up and we're neck and neck for the finish line. Oh, oh, I'm spread. I'm spread and I'm gonna get you, dude. I'm gonna make it. Oh, we will. Thank you so much. Steven went to the store. I made a severe mistake by telling me how to engage sport mode right yeah, at the finish was, line. He was <laughs> so far back, and so I waited for him like next to the store, and I was like, hey, you're on like eco mode. And he was like, what? And he turns on sport mode, and I ran out of juice, and I was like, oh! Oh, <laughs> the holy grail. Extra nutrition. Oh, oh no! That does look premium. Oh, these are premium. Cameraman definitely gets some garlic fries. How much weight do you think it could hold? This? A lot more than this. Mm. This is the, like, uh, either this or the bearings would be the weak point. If you were to just straight pull on this until something broke, uh, it would either be the fastening to the wall on this one, or it would just pull the Unistrut apart before it would break any of the rest of it. That'd be my guess but it would probably take an alarming amount of force. What's the plan for today? Uh, finish the elevator? I mean, realistically, I'm going into way too much detail, so I probably won't finish it today, but we'll get a lot closer. And I think I'm just gonna do, so I'm just cleaning up that purposes, but I think I'm gonna do the frame of it here, just a rough outline, enough to hold it together. Um, 
And then before I like finish all of that up, I'll mount up the winch up there and get that worked out so that we can see it go up and down and then, you know, get it up to the top there and see how it looks and fits and what I want to do there. Got that piece cut to go in between there. And then I could just do a square tube across the top. Uh, obviously I'll cap these ends for aesthetic purposes later. But then I thought, why not use a piece of inch and three quarter DOM to make it more like a hand railing. And then I thought I might as well get extra fancy with this too and maybe put some bends in it. So it kind of goes back over back a little bit just to add some detail and give it a little more space in case we have like six people going up the elevator at once. this to be more useful than I expected because this because of the bend and stuff does not fit in the chop saw and this is quieter and cleaner and nicer than the grinder would do so Synthetic winch line. Um, basically because it's cool. Um, also because it's quieter and nicer and stronger and more durable than steel cable. Um, and it looks cool. So I just had to make some very minor modifications to the drum here. Just had to enlarge that hole and then finagle this a little bit and that little aluminum thing fits right through there. So now that you know, pulls on that like there. That's it? Yeah, I forget how long I ordered of this, but clearly way too much. I was trying to find shorter, but I wanted the half inch thick, not for strength, just for beefy lookingness. And it was hard to find half inch in anything shorter than whatever I ordered, which I'm guessing was like a hundred feet. I don't know how I thought that was gonna fit on that spool. I wonder how, if I can figure out how the braid on the end of this works, I could just redo it and it looks pretty simple. I uh, reverse engineered this knot thing here and uh, it's extremely simple. So you just go through the center of the rope and then come around to the other side. Go back through. There we go. Back through that way. Which already looks pretty nice. I'm gonna do that one more time. Wow. And then from there we go down a little ways here and uh, open it up. Just feed the rope down inside the middle of itself. And then it's basically like a little Chinese finger trap. Oh yeah. Actually, it's exactly like a Chinese finger trap. <laughs> hey, this might take out some of the abruptness of the starting of the winch, 
because it doesn't really stretch once it's got tension on it. Like it doesn't continue to stretch. But if you pull on this, it's got a cup like an inch or maybe two inches of just like kind of springiness to it hmm. right at the beginning. Yeah. So, because when the winch first starts, it doesn't like ramp up. It just goes. Mm -hmm. So that might uh, that might help. Really. don't like though is all these little chips of hot metal going down my neck. That's not fun. There's really good evidence of why we need an elevator. Yes, it is. So we don't need to do sketchy things like that again. <laughs> what are you talking about? Elevator passenger. Yeah, sounds fun. Ready? Try to stand a little more center. Oh, there you go. Yeah. All right. It's pretty fast. Yeah, that's not too slow at all. Wow. Honestly, I don't know if you'd want to go much faster. No, that's awesome. <laughs> I can let myself down until about there. <laughs> this is awesome. Oh, this is so good. You can just let it all the way down until it hits the ground. It doesn't matter. <laughs> that is so much faster than I was imagining it. That's perfect. Well, they claim 33 feet a minute, but I spooled up a lot more uh, cable on there. Yeah. Which was the plan. That's why I got this, because then it enlarges the diameter and it increases the gear ratio. <laughs> All right, I gotta go for an up ride. All right, ready? Yeah. <laughs> That's very nice. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Great success. We have an elevator now. <laughs> yeah. It's an elevator that you need an operator for. <laughs> We're going real old school here. We had to have an elevator operator oh, guy. Oh yeah, true. To run the, run the elevator for you. <laughs> but um, yeah, so there's a few ways I could do that. I could try to find a wireless remote um, or I could make a longer cord with a spoolie thing, that, just like a spring-loaded spoolie thing. <laughs> a pop quiz for you and the people watching. Mm -hmm. I did one of these welds left-handed and one of them right-handed. So like take torch in the right hand, rod in the left, and then switch. Okay. Which one is which? Uh, let's see. That one looks pretty good to me for my novice inquiries. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they both look pretty good. Hmm. Is there a trick? Like the no. dimes are leaning this way. No, there's way no on trick. It's just uh, it's just uh, mm. the best. The best. I'm gonna say this one's left-handed. You're correct. Yeah. I think these ones are just spaced a little more evenly. That's what yep. I was thinking. They are for sure. Next step. Uh, go up the ladder again because I don't have a switch for the elevator yet. Uh, yeah. So that's all pretty much welded. <laughs> I'm gonna conveniently raise it up to a better height to work on, and now I will uh, put the floor on it. That's extremely sturdy. Mm -hmm. I thought I might have to brace this in the corners, but that's not going anywhere. 
Actually, you can see the beam flexing up there. Oh, yeah. Look at the... <laughs> wow. That's fine. I mean, it's not going to break or anything, but... <clears throat> yeah. Finished. Oh, yeah. The dogs really aren't going to like riding up here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that part. Like, they Dogs probably wouldn't like it anyway, but they <laughs> really hate that stuff. Yeah. It doesn't like, yeah, like the bearings, the space in the bearings, like it's just quiet yeah. and it's beautiful. How, uh, how high is that? Can you stand next to that? I, I need to weld the underside of this stuff. Let's see that it's hard to tell. Uh, you're totally <laughs> decided it was time to put up the, well, put up a steel rack here. I thought about moving over the other one that I'd made on the other shop, but it's kind of crap. So we'll, uh, I'll just make a new one. That's gonna be awesome. Yeah. Yeah, right now it's kind of warped, obviously, but it's not very rigid that way until it's screwed to the wall, so it should be fine. 
And this top one is square tube, uh, simply because I ran out of this scrap plumbing pipe that I was using. So, anyway, that's one done. I'm gonna make three of these so that I can have like a section for short stuff and then a further one farther out for the full length pieces. My um, metal storage shelf project is uh, paused because I don't have, I need to get some long uh, concrete anchors so they can go through the foam and into the concrete because just screwing those shelves to the plywood probably wouldn't be a good idea with hundreds of pounds of steel on them. Open your eyes. A black widow in a cup. <laughs> you found a black widow? It's actually a Here, brown well, widow from let's... Africa. But Where it is she... part of the widow family. <laughs> where did you find this? I found it where they all come from. I just decided to look because it's the fall season. And I wanted to get one at a cup. Will's been trying to convince Ethan that Black Widows live on his property for like a year now. Well, it's, it's still not a Black Widow, Will. It's a Black Widow. I hate to break widow. it to you. It's part of the Widow family. And it's actually very dangerous to bugs. But <laughs> just because it's really, you're such a swindler, Will. It is. Even the spider. It's not a Black Widow. It's Brown Widow. Yeah, that's not the same thing. That's like saying a Honda is a Subaru because it's a car from Japan. Like it's not related. And, and it's it not the came same thing. from Africa, <laughs> all the way to Ethan's property. Uh huh. It's very rare to find them, and it was very scary to catch. And who told you that that's what this is? So you found a Wish.com Black Widow? It's not, not a Black Widow! It's that's a your surprise. Black Widow! It's not the same, like, <laughs> it's just not! I'm a Black Widow. <laughs> Look, right. still haven't found a Black Widow! That was the most anticlimactic thing in my entire life! <laughs> that is that spider. And it says, here's what you need to know about the Brown Widow. And then it relates it directly to the Black Widow. How is the Black Widow different than a Brown Widow? How I'd is say. it different? This is a very common question, Edwin. <laughs> okay. Black Widows and Brown Widows are both members of the genus like Dectorius in the Black Widow spider family. Uh huh. You should treat them with caution. Although mm. the brown widows are more poisonous than the black widow spider, their, bite, their bite is less harmful to humans. <laughs> so it's a wish to oh, no. black widow. Both spiders feature an hourglass shape on their abdomen. The black widow will be bright red and the brown widow will be yellow, brown, or orange. How did you figure out what kind of spider it was? I took it and I took pictures of it and I documented it before I left. Uh -huh. And then I did extensive research to find all these things about that spider. I zoomed in to the shape on its butt and stuff and I made sure that I had a black widow in a cup. And then I realized it was a brown widow after I told you guys I had the surprise. But still, pretty crazy that I should have found something like that. Because they're very <laughs> rare. It's like finding a Charizard. Yeah, it is. And I hate spiders. I had to pick that sucker up on that leaf. You saw that leaf, it's like that big, man. My finger was right there. 
How long did you spend looking for that? I just found it while I was looking for some bolts in the dirt while I was working on this thing. It like was crawling and I was like, whoa. And I like grabbed a cup and put it in the cup. <laughs> and then I just hit it till today so that I could show you guys. Ethan's wrong in saying that it's like a Honda and a Subaru. You found a Civic, just not a Type R. Yeah, I found the Civic. It is around. of the Widow family. And none of you guys believe me. And so I had to show you guys. You did say Black for years, Widow though. I didn't know there was such a thing as a brown Widow. <laughs> you did find a Widow though. Yep. I'll give you that. So watch out if you're digging around here, Stephen. There's brown Widows about. 